The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today we have a very interesting guest. Uh, his name is Ryan Foster, and he has a, a really unique approach to gardening. And I want to welcome Ryan to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. All right. So uh, Dick uh, Gagnon here at the, at the station said, you know, you've got to interview this guy. He's got this really uh, unique approach to edible... Landscaping. Landscaping. Yep. Never heard of it. Uh, it's a, obviously, it's a, it's a cool idea. Um, as I look at my neighborhood, everybody's doing their lawns. Everybody's worried about the, the other neighbor who's got no weed control. And those little dandelions are just right there. <laughs> you know, I'm taking care of mine. My neighbor's taking care of theirs. And, you know, that's where our, our minds are focused sure, on. Sure, sure. Uh, and uh, I've, I've had gardens in the past. I love my garden. I've done it's wonderful therapy. But... Sometimes as you get a little older, you get really busy, you can't mm, mm, do it. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what, what you're doing. What, what, what's, your, what's the name of the business again? It's Homegrown Edible Landscaping and Nursery LLC. <laughs> so it's a mouthful, um, but I have um, my landscaping outfit, but I also have my nursery as well. So it's an organically grown nursery, anything from apples, pears, plums, peaches, to bushes, berries, raspberries, strawberries. Define organic to me. What do you mean by organic? Not synthetic chemicals. Okay. So you're not using like the Miracle Grows and stuff no, like that. No, no, that um, is kind of that's a microbiology um, killer. Okay. And in terms of gardening, you want as many microbes. They're your allies. Right. Um, Years ago, I used to use. Uh, I used to go to Blake's Turkey Farm up north and use uh, the turkey. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, it worked really well. Yeah. But uh, yeah. shoveling is not exactly a pleasure. Sure, <laughs> sure. So. Well, I want to go back to the, the dandelions in the lawn bit that you were talking about. Because yeah. that is, that cracks me up. Dandelions are medicine, if you believe it or not. Well, okay. As, as you... Watch the Beverly Hillbillies. If you've ever seen the Beverly Hillbillies, the collard greens, and, and, and they actually used it. The, they, they, they talked about the dandelions. Right. And no, it's, like was, bitter, it's a bitter herb leaf. Yep. Good for your liver, really? blood purifier. Some people substitute it for coffee. Uh, you can dye with the flower and with the leaves. It's, it's actually a plant that's... Dye is in the coloring. Coloring, okay. exactly. So there's, that's really funny to me. And... and yeah. To bring that back into the spectrum of people's lives of looking at plants in their yard as medicine um, Interesting. is something that I'm looking to make more prevalent. Now, milkweed is the same way, right? People use oh, yeah. milkweed. That's for it's sure. Just a plant that everybody it is gross. It makes you know you have fun with them, but uh, yeah. they're a nuisance if you want a pristine looking garden. Along. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the the what you do. It, it, you're not planting dandelions in people's gardens. No, okay. no. There are specific herbs that people will ask for. Mm -hmm. Some people already have plant knowledge, but don't have the time to plant their garden. So that's where I step in. I'm a horticulturist, so I have a degree from University of New Hampshire in horticulture. And then after that, I went on to work, and that was in ornamental horticulture, so I already have that knowledge. Then I went on to work for farms and then eventually to orchard and nursery. So that's my background, and I come through, and I've worked for tree service uh, company, landscaping companies, 
and I come and I have that that experience with that side of it. Then I bring in this this other aspect of agriculture, mm -hmm. where people may not have as much knowledge. Maybe they've read a little bit online, or her hearsay from someone else, and they're curious. So I'm really coming through the, your yard and. The other day I was at a lady's place and she says, I, I just want my place for my kids to grow up and for everything to be edible. Okay. So I said, great. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I said, well, you got some blueberries right here. Really? Yeah. Awesome. You got r raspberries right here. This is an oak tree. Believe it or not, the it, oak's edible. And you can make it look uh, pleasant as well at, at, at the well, same definitely. time. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, thank you for staying in New Hampshire. We, we find that a lot of our graduates from UNH, you know, they, they go on to greener pastures, but we want you to stay here and, yeah. and, uh, and be part of uh, our uh, environment in, in helping the state continue to, to grow and flourish. Definitely. So, speaking of which, so somebody calls you up and says, look, I, um, I, got, I got a beautiful lawn. I want a garden. I want some herbs. I probably want some tomatoes. Uh, I, you know, I don't really have the time. What can you offer me? How do you walk them through the, what you have to offer? It depends on their budget. Mm -hmm. So depending on their budget, some people it's, it's a little slim. And, and I can do a sliding scale for people okay. depending on the demographic and where they're at. If, uh, if you're low income, I'm not going to charge an arm and a leg. Right. Um, I also need to be, need to be a, a business. Sure. And I need to be able to make a profit. keep it going. Yep. So, yeah, I'll come through and create the vision for people. Okay. Plants that they may not know, but they would work well there. That's something that I have a specialty in, is, is using my creativity, using imagination. And after, after I go through and hear what they like, I, I really don't like tomatoes. I really do like blueberries. Whatever right. it may be, then I, okay, okay, yeah, I keep mental note, uh, so I write it down. I go home, depending on what they want, and I create a design. Throughout the yard. Exactly. Now, I, I look at my house, and uh, I, I know where the sun is at mm -hmm. special parts of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm actually moving a plant all around my yard because it, it just can't take too much sun. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just trying to put it so it looks aesthetically pretty, but yeah. yet at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, where would be a good place to have a garden? Because at certain part of the morning, I'm not getting the morning sun, but I'm getting the full spectrum of the of the end. You know, yeah. you can help with that design. Do you do you take into that account? I mean, do you have to look at the the peak of when the sun is? Or for sure, yeah. A lot of people's yards are not closed in, but it's not always full sun. It's, right. it's it's a liberty to have full sun all day. Okay, and that's ideal to have full sun. So some plants are shade loving, mainly herbs, medicinals, and most fruiting plants need about six to eight hours of full sun a day to fruit well. Okay. There are, plant, there are some fruit out there, honey berries, bush cherries, that they'll fruit in, in part shade and they'll do well and be sweet. So I'm working with plants that I know from experience, they'll fruit in part shade and that's a fair amount of customers' yards aren't full sun. Right. I would imagine you know, we're not either, but you know we do get a good a good cross section of the, of the sun morning and night, but um, or, or later in the day. Um, soil that's got to be a big part mm -hmm. of the problem too. A problem or, or think a factor. Yeah. Uh, there can be some really loving acid loving soils and some sweet soils. Yep. How do you manage that? Soil tests. Yeah. Send it into UNH Cooperative Extension. They do great soil tests. Come back to acid, add some lime or some potash. Mm -hmm. To potash. alkaline, put some sulfur in there. There's a, uh, organic sulfur that lowers your pH. So there's, there's ways of managing that. One thing that I'm noticing a lot around houses is very sandy soil. Because when people build a house or do a development, they just put fill in. Oh. So there's not as much organic material in the soil. It's not a problem. It can be amended over the years and built up to a point where plants are going to thrive. And bag of fertilizer, whether it's um, 
blood meal or uh, well-rotted cow manure. It's going to build your soil up. And as your plants grow, they drop their leaves. Leaves become soil. The more plants that you have in your area, the more soil will, will be built up over the years. Okay. I, uh, we, we just moved from a condo into a, a nice little ranch here in, in Nashua. And uh, uh, my wife, I make everybody's lunch for them. And uh, I take all the scraps, whether it's the avocados or the grapes or the strawberries, and I put it in a little bag. And she says, "What are you doing with that?" Well, I'm a little mulch pile. <laughs> You're kidding me, a mulch pile? Yeah, yeah. And I got my little mulch pile going. I'm very faithful every morning. And and she said, "Well, when are you going to use that?" I probably next year. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I put it with the grass cuttings and, great, and with Kevin. the sand and. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just plotting it out, and just making sure I, I, I got everything uh, all squared away for next year. But I love to garden. I, I do love to garden. Yeah. And uh, I love to hear the birds. I feed mm -hmm. the birds. Uh, it, it's, uh, so you can, you can put in plants that will draw birds as well. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Certain, certain trees, certain bushes. Okay. Hazelnut is a native shrub that... Myriad uses for that plant. Grouse eat the catkins, which is the male flower. Turkeys as well. But then once the nut comes on, squirrels, chipmunks, or bigger birds okay. as well will go for them. But they're, it's an edible. It's a native shrub that's around, and it will fruit in shade as well. It's kind of an edge plant. Oh, she laughed at me yesterday, my wife, because I, uh, I put some oranges on, the, on, on a tree. What are you doing? I saw a Baltimore Oriole the other day. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy that way, but I love it, you yeah. know? And once in a while, I buy a bag of cherries, and I just put them out in, in, in the yard and uh, see what, what's going to come in, in, and get them. And so I planted a cherry tree. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so tell, describe your, your greenhouse. What do you have for a facility? What do you it's, it's growing right now. I've got a 24 by 12 foot greenhouse right now. It's a hoop house. Mm -hmm. And then I grow most of my plants outside. So I'll be, I was so early in the spring in the greenhouse, lump them outside, mm -hmm. and then come so late summer and fall, then I'll be extending my season by planting crops in there. So I'm, I'm working as my own little homestead to support myself, sure. but also using part of my greenhouse for propagation. Do you have room to grow? Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And, and now you're located in New Boston. Yep. What is your range of territory to, that you service? Well, right now I've done jobs up to Concord, uh, Milford, Manchester, and then I'm working on a job right now in Merrimack, Mass. And now you're here in Nashua Access, so I would assume that you would come this far definitely, south. Definitely, definitely. And uh, what type of uh, notice do you have to have? Is it is it late in the season now? Uh, no, well, this season right now, it's shaping up to be a wet one. Yeah. So it's a good year to plant. Because you don't have to water as much. The, the right. sky is going to drop rain on it, and it's softer. On a hot, dry year like last year, that's a, that's a tough year for a plant to get established. Sure. So this year, I'm getting a lot of my mother plants in the ground and established this year so that I can propagate and have them proliferate in the future years. Yeah. So when somebody calls you up, they, they want to... Uh, Explore as to what do you, do you have a website that, that, that they right now I'm working off of Facebook. I'm gonna have a website coming up soon. Okay, so facebook.com forward slash homegrown edible. They can contact me either through my phone number or through an email. So whether it's email or phone, I receive their message, ask them what they're looking for, and when a good time is to set up an evaluation for their property. And okay. I go, I'm going to someone on Saturday, this Saturday. So I'll Every day but Sunday, pretty much. Good. Yeah, yeah you need a day of rest. Exactly. So when, uh, when somebody says, well, what, what kind of products do you use? And you, you, you obviously don't like the, you know, the standard stuff that you find at maybe at Home Depot, the miracle Grows, or the, the Roundup. So mm -hmm. I stay away from Roundup. Yeah. I've heard some. So, you know, just not a slant. Just I, I, wanted, I, I like natural stuff. Yeah. Uh, but if, if, uh, if they want to do a weed control or if they want to do a fertilizer, do you have products that you you distribute your, yourself, or is that, that I do not right? distribute. I source through other people. Okay. There are ways to do weed control. One good way is sheet mulching. So I'll go, I'll save all my cardboard, 
or I'll go to the dump, transfer station, and get some cardboard. So when you lay down a thick layer of cardboard, it smothers all the weeds. And then you can lay some loam and some more mulch over that. Mm -hmm. For that year, it smothers out all your weeds. And that cardboard breaks down and builds your soil. Oh, okay. So that's a one way of doing that. And then for fertilizer, yeah, I source out to do other um, agway or blue seal. Okay, and you, you try to find as many natural products as possible only, because you want. Yep. You want I only to. use uh, my potting soils, organic soil, and then fertilizers as well. So, how long does it take for you to establish a, a, a plan for for somebody who calls you up? I I don't know what I want. Help me out, uh, and uh, or I I do want just a tomato, or I just want some basil or some. Uh, some uh, an herb garden or, yeah. or a, uh, a garden for uh, the butterflies. You know, sure. Butterfly. So, how long does it take for you to, to establish uh, a plan for people? It can be that week. Okay. Whether it's a butterfly garden, I can, I can go to a nursery that I like to work with and source out some plants that I, I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. There's certain native plants that are pretty difficult to propagate and I'm I'm collecting seeds this year and have seeds stocked up that I'm, pro I'm propagating right now. Okay. So I'm building up my stock. As a new company, it, it takes a little while to, sure. to get going. But for a small garden, it can be that week. Um, I have a customer right now who she wants a 20-year plan. Really? So I'm, I'm going to say, well, nut trees, they take about 20 years to produce. So... Let's get the nut trees in first. That same year, let's put the fruit trees in because fruit trees can take about three to six years depending on them. And then also let's get your berries in and get you some fruit this year. So strawberries and raspberries, you can get fruit that year. Blueberries, uh, depending on how big they are, two years, three years. And then for fruit trees, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's planning out making sure you're getting fruit that year while you're patient enough to wait for the bigger trees to establish. Up at the Capitol, I understand that there is a walnut tree that produces walnuts, and I want a couple of those seeds, and I want to, I want to grow them. If I, if I found some of those, could you grow them? Yes. Okay. I'll tell you how to do it. All right. But the nice thing about it is it's been there forever. Exactly. And there, that's a historic tree. Definitely. And uh, it's kind of a neat little selling point that yeah. if you wanted to... But I definitely, I, I'm, my stepdaughter is allergic to walnuts, so mm. uh, I want to plant it somewhere as a yeah. memorial for something. But yeah. I just think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so it, it, you can, if somebody wants something and, and maybe their budget's a little slim, can you use what materials they have in, at, at their house? Sometimes I'll walk around a property and point out trees or bushes, but they had no clue we're even nut producers or berry bushes, mm. and just start out like that. Say, well, you got some black raspberries here, you got raspberries here, and you've also got some shag bark hickories. You can exploit all that and, and right. develop it and make right. it, uh, and you can, uh, I would assume, make it look more aesthetic. Yeah, I like to do a little bit of clearing. Mm -hmm. So if you got some, some scrabby, you know, scrubby around a tree, clear that out. Maybe make a burn pile um, or haul it off, whatever people like, and really um, make those the, the established pretty trees and, and make it aesthetically pleasing. So those are the ones that people will remember them. In our property, we have, um, it looks like an ash tree, and it has a dangling flower. Uh, almost like, they almost look like grapes. Uh, I don't know if it's an ash tree or not. Uh, but one of the things that troubles me about the trees, um, they, they look really pretty, but they've got these vines going up all through the tree, and uh, it, it looks like they're choking those off. Is that, so I'm, I'm clipping them at the roots, but uh, they look like they're an invasive type of, uh, you can determine what's an invasive species or what isn't, right? Yeah, there's, there was a time when the state was giving out non-native species that were bird plants. Well, that was in the 70s and the 80s, and here we are 30 to 40 years later, and we're realizing 
Not a good idea. It's not so good. So, yeah, I've got my eye on black swallowwort, oriental bittersweet, uh, Virginia rose. There's, there may be one more, but oriental bittersweet is probably the one that you're talking about. It's got orange roots, and it's it twines up things and just uh, chokes them As a matter of fact, it does have orange roots, yeah. And uh, But the, the bark itself is like a light gray. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and it just it just fans out, and it's it's birds really. love it. The birds love it. I watched some turkeys roll through my yard this winter, and they have orange berries on them, and they flew up into a tree, picked them clean. Mm -hmm. well, the thing is, they go out and they, they plant them for you. They plant them everywhere. Yeah, I don't know if this uh, this this has a it does have an orange type of root, but it didn't. I I know what bittersweet looks like. Mm -hmm. This wasn't bittersweet. This mm -hmm. is uh, they're just vines. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're choking the tree. Yep. Uh, and so I'm, I'm just going down and just uh, cutting them out as much as possible. And, uh, but it, it, they look invasive. Like, uh, but you can, you can identify things like that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, can you get rid of them naturally without, without poisoning the other trees? Yeah. There's ways of using animals as our allies. Uh, yep. A friend of mine I recently just met, Foundwell Farm. She's over in uh, Pembroke, and she uses her goats. Yeah, goats eat everything. <laughs> she pens them in, lets them stay there. She'll rent them out to people. Really? And they take care of it. So that's a way of doing it. I used to work for a farm on the coast, New Roots Farm, and they would pen in their, their pigs. Pigs just yeah. root up everything and get it cleaned out. So there is definitely a way to do it. Um, so you're really taking a very natural approach to a lot of this, and uh, oh, yeah. using is what uh, the MacGyver route, if you basically what what you have on hand, and and keeping it pretty much. Uh, it's old ways um, in a new age. How did you get into this? I what drew you to this? It's just back to the roots, really. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at what our culture, our society is moving towards, and it doesn't feel right in my heart. So as I came out of college, I was lucky enough to work for New Roots Farm, and they were great teachers to me. And then I went across the country and worked for several farmers in Montana and California, and eventually into Northern California, and just had amazing teachers over the years. I was blessed to have really good teachers. So as I learned from that, I um, was in a community that was uh, predominantly Native Americans, the Karuk tribe of Northern California. And they're they're doing keeping their culture alive and well and one of their practices is burning cultural burning and that's a way of keeping pests down such as ticks yep. mosquitoes but also keeping the forest floor clean so that when you are harvesting nuts it's easy picking it also clears out underbrush so that young saplings come up which is good for deer so it's double. Right. So they have an, an new use, source. Yeah. But also keeps your woods open for line of sight for hunting. Yeah. So it's just, it's really old ways that I've been um, lucky enough to be exposed to. And you can incorporate this into any base, basically anybody's uh, modern, if you will, uh, homestead uh, here yep. in, New, in New Hampshire. Yeah. Both wooded, non-wooded, city, non-city. You can. It's, uh, it's, I'm definitely going to uh, come up against some restrictions uh, for fire. That's something that sure. has had such a um, negative. negative viewpoint on yeah. for a while, but it's really an ally that I think we need to work with more often. Yeah, it's just got to be in a very con controlled way. In the fall time, when you know you have rains coming, that's a great way to utilize fire. So if you do get a fire going, the rains come and put it right out. Now, in Nashua, that probably wouldn't be a... Sure. Yeah. A, a, I, I do want to talk about Nashua a little bit. I, I was listening on the radio the other day and saying how uh, school children are having a tough time accessing food banks in Nashua. And I also did see how there was certain gardens being put in in Nashua, raised beds. And that's something that I really want to encourage people to utilize and tap their proper... Uh, use the untapped potential of their property. Right. As a food source. As a food source. Uh, so 
hungry kids is something that it just doesn't need to happen. We have plenty of space. Right. Even if we're in a, an urban setting, you know, there's always a little yard, and you can fit in. Are you available at some time, uh, as your business grows, to go into some schools and maybe just volunteer a little bit of your, of your expertise sure. and just say, hey, you know, this is, a, did you know that you could eat maybe a white pine tree, you know, or something to that effect? They have pine these nuts, courses, yeah. they, uh, nature's, nature's class or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've chaperoned on a couple of those, and cool. it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, one tree, the bottomland tree, shagbark hickory, that is a, Tasty nut. I don't know if you've ever tried it before, but never heard of it. I harvested it. I harvested it a few years back, and just toasting a little bit, it just sweetens it up. It's so really? good. How do people get in touch with you again? It's through Facebook. Through Facebook, uh, Facebook.com/slash forward slash homegrown edible, mm -hmm. and then my cell phone six zero three seven one four eight eight zero three. Do you ask people to take an inventory uh, of their home? What, what's it? Or do you just say, you know what? Let's set up a time where we can look at your surroundings. And uh, maybe we can put in this bush, take out this bush, you know, let's set up an appointment. Yeah, that's, that's the way I go about it. And the evaluation, I don't, that's a free estimate. Okay. I come through and I see what you already have. I always want to try and work with what people already have. Mm -hmm. But going forward, some people will give me, will give free reign. Just put together something. How open. small is the smallest uh, project that you've had? Four by eight raised bed. Uh huh. So you would go that small. You sure. would you would you would do sure. something like that. Or uh, what's the biggest project? This one that I'm looking at. Twenty five year plan. Twenty five year plan, but also um, the one in Merrimack, Mass. Is it's not the biggest yard, but the guy wants everything edible. Everything edible. Everything edible. So I'm I'm pretty you know, jived up about that. That sounds so so cool. Yeah. So cool. Do you, uh, do you recommend lighting, too, uh, for, say, if somebody it's, uh, doesn't have enough light in the, in the yard, do you, do you say, hey, well, maybe you could put these solar lights in or something like that? Um, more, more uh, hey, let's, let's limb up these trees. Okay. Or can, and can you we can take do that. these trees down? Yep. You can do that. Yep. Wonderful. All right. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, if, I, I wish you the greatest success, and hopefully that you can come back and talk about uh, future events, but uh, Thanks, I'd like to see some more pictures, too, you sure. know, of, of what you have to offer and uh, uh, some of you, you know, the things uh, that you've done, some of the projects. Appreciate it a lot. All right. Thanks so much. Guys. Okay. Thanks. And listen, if you want your garden to be edible, if you want your, your plants, call Ryan. It sounds like a really cool idea and uh, make really good use of your, your, your home project. So listen, call him. And uh, if you have a story, you want to come on the show, please, uh, anytime, come. And uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Until next week, it's Gate City Chronicles. We'll see you. Thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles. And we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark Cleaning. They've been a sponsor for quite a few years now, and uh, we appreciate them being a sponsor. And if you want to be a guest on our show, contact accessnashua at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your story. Until next week, thanks for watching. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.